Something that you might be very frustrated with is that you feel like you play well in practice, but then when you try and perform in matches, you just can't do it in the same way and really simple things start to break down. There can obviously be a few things going on causing this, one of the big ones being the differences in kind of the pressure, you're playing in a match, there's the fear of losing and that side of things. But then I think for a lot of players, there's something else that's going on and it's something that doesn't get talked about all that much. So that's gonna be the topic of this video and I think it's gonna be really eye-opening for you. It'll help you to think about things in a different way. It'll help you to practice more effectively and over time, it's really gonna allow you to become a much better player. Okay, so what I'm talking about here are the phases of learning. It's very possible that the reason that you can't play as well in matches as you do in practice and even some of the really basic things that you feel like you should be able to do start to break down is because you haven't turned the techniques that you're learning into a new habit yet. So we've got different phases of learning when you start learning a particular technique. So maybe I'm working on my forehand and I'm working on improving the position of my elbow as I do my unit turn. So initially, I have to think about that every single time, over and over again, as the ball comes, I have to think about the position and the elbow movement that I'm doing. If I stop thinking about it, it doesn't happen. I'm just gonna kind of revert back to what I used to do. I have to spend enough time just doing this over and over again until it starts to become a more automatic process. So the cognitive stage, I'm kind of really thinking about it. Then we move into the associative stage where we can start to kind of challenge it a little bit more. So now I can start to kind of work on slightly more different, uh, difficult challenges. So maybe some gentle structured point play and still think about trying to work on this elbow position. And we basically have to go through enough repetitions in the, the cognitive stage and the associative stage until we get to the autonomous stage and when we get to the autonomous stage, we've achieved enough repetitions that now this movement pattern is a habit. I don't have to think about it anymore. It's a habit. So whenever I see the ball going to that side or I realize I'm going to hit an inside out forehand, this unit turn with this elbow position happens out of habit. And now it's stored in a different part of the brain. I'm no longer thinking about it. My brain just draws the movement pattern out and it happens. And it's only once we get to that stage that realistically we can expect things to stick within competitive match play. Firstly, we've got the energy expenditure component. Like it just literally takes energy and focus and concentration for us to think about doing it over and over again. And when we're on court, there's so many of the things that we've got to think about, we don't have the energy and focus reserves to focus on it. But then it's also about in stressful situations, our bodies revert back to our natural tendencies as a kind of safety and protective mechanism. So for both of those reasons, until we've achieved a sufficient number of repetitions, you cannot expect things to operate in match play like they do in practice. So it's a very, it's a very likely thing that this is what's happening with you. If you're working on some aspect of your forehand and you're working on some aspect of your backhand and you're working on your serves, you've got all these different things that you're working on and in practice environments, you can kind of make it happen because you've got enough bandwidth left over. But then when you get into a match situation, it's just too much stuff. Your body reverts back to your bad habits or natural habits. And that's one of the big reasons why your performance drops. So the reason that I'm explaining this to you is because hopefully it's gonna ease some of your frustrations because you might be expecting something to happen. You might be expecting to play well in matches when realistically based on your phase of learning, it's an unrealistic expectation. And once you know that, you can start to be a little bit kinder to yourself and a bit easier on yourself. And you can also start to structure your practice sessions in a way that can facilitate improvement and allow you to kind of transition from where you are now to being able to get things to stick in matches. And this might mean the way that you structure things within your practice sessions. So potentially making things a little bit easier and doing enough repetitions until you feel more confident with certain things and then building up the difficulty of the training session over time. Or it might mean in terms of the amount of practice that you allow for different types of things. Because if you're trying to make all these technical changes and you're playing five times a week and four of those times you're just playing points and playing matches, that environment might be preventing you from improving your technique and really preventing you from playing your best 
in the important matches. So you might need to change the way that you're structuring your practice so you have more dedicated time so that that allows you to go through the repetitions in the way that you need that then enable you to turn things into habits that will then stick in matches. So depending on your personality, that might sound a little bit less fun if you really just like playing points, but in terms of you learning and developing and improving as a tennis player, that's how learning occurs. And you've just got to accept that if you haven't automated processes, it's likely to break down under pressure in match situations, but now you understand it, you've got the opportunity to kind of make some changes and really make some big improvements. Okay, hopefully that all makes sense and you have found it to be useful. Now, before you go, I wanna let you know about a couple of additional resources that might really help you out. The first one is gonna be a series of videos about improving the quality of your practice. It ain't glamorous, it ain't sexy, but Better quality practice is one of the best things you can do to improve your tennis. So I will place a playlist, a link to a playlist down in the description so you can start to go through those videos. I also wanna circle back to something I mentioned at the start about not playing as well in matches because the fear factor is real. You know, there is the fear of losing and the pressure of match situations that can cause issues for some people. It's something I used to struggle with massively myself, but I did some very interesting things to overcome it. So I've made a video that talks about that. And again, I'll place a link down in the description. The final thing I wanna let you know about is a masterclass that I've got to teach you about brain-based training for tennis, because that's the main thing that I do with tennis players. I teach them how to train and improve vision so they can track the ball better, so that they can react faster on all of their shots. I teach them how to improve coordination so they can use better technique and get control on their shots and all that good stuff. So if you'd like to learn more about that, I'll place a link up there and a link in the description. And at the end of the masterclass, it's gonna tell you a little bit about my program. Uh, so if you're interested in that, it's also gonna talk about the next steps uh, of us potentially working together. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.